Hello and welcome to this special episode that is a little bit outside my regular content. But this is an episode that I've been wanting to do for quite a while actually. And this is a deep dive into an important part of my childhood. That was a big musical inspiration for me at least. And this was the music from Amiga demos. And especially one demo called State of the Art by Spaceballs. But first, what is an Amiga demo? And what is an Amiga, you might ask? Well, basically it was a computer. The development of Amiga computers started already in 1982 by a company called HiToro. But after around two years, the technology was acquired by Commodore. And Commodore was then able to complete the development of the product. And the first Amiga, the Amiga 1000, was released in 1985. And the market was impressed by the performance and, and multitasking capabilities of this computer. And also the quality of graphic and sounds that it could produce. And what was so cool with the Amiga was the technology it used, which enabled it to have a great performance. And this technology was called multiprocessor technology. So it basically had four processors working simultaneously. One central processor, one processor for handling the memory, one processor for audio, and one processor for graphics. And this meant if you had the skills of assembler programming, you could get a lot of performance out of this computer, if you just knew what you were doing. And also it was great that it was no glitching, because the processes were working in parallel and not in serial. But the real breakthrough came in 1987, when the Amiga 500 was released. In this model, Commodore managed to squeeze all the technology and the keyboard into one single unit. And they also managed to keep the price of the unit quite low on the market. So this one sold in around 2.6 million copies globally. And the unit featured color, imagine that! But also it featured a 4 channel 8 bit sound card that supported PCM sampling. And then during the late 80s and early 90s, computer interested youth, as known as hackers, or as people mostly call them during those days, nerds that were wasting their time on a technology that's not gonna get them anywhere. And there was absolutely no money to get out of IT back then. But anyway, they started to make uh, demos basically to show off their programming skills. So they wanted to show just how many cool graphics and sounds they could squeeze out of the Amiga unit. And the graphics was of course very impressive, but what caught my attention was mainly the sound and the music that they created. And I was very impressed by this music, and, and usually this was some kind of techno or Eurodance music. But it was also sometimes 80s synth or whatever. And there were many cool demos done during these days. But as I said earlier, there were especially one team that really impressed me. And this was the Norwegian demo team called Spaceballs. But first of all, just to place Norway on the map. So Norway is a part of the Nordics. And the Nordics are in Northern Europe, and it consists of Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, and then Norway. And this demo team, Spaceballs, had taken their names from the movie Spaceballs from 1987. So their leader was called Dark Helmet, the lead programmer was called Lone Star, and then later also Major Apple, Yogurt. Defender and President Screw joined the team. And this team made a lot of demos. But in 1992 they had their big breakthrough and this was with the demo State of the Art. which was later followed up by Nine Fingers. Yeah. 
The music in these demos was uh, made by different artists. A lot of the tracks was uh, made by someone that called himself Winnie, although his real name was Paul. But my favorite creator was for sure Travolta, also known as Rude Baron, and his real name was Rune. However, it was not the same Rune that developed Pro Tracker 2 for Amiga. That would have been a great coincidence, but they were different Runes, unfortunately. So, the tracker that was used to make the music was the software that was developed on the Amiga that could be used to sequence uh, 8-bit PCM samples and also some Amiga-generated synth sounds using a user interface and utilizing the four channels that were available on the Amiga. One limitation though, uh, if you listen to old Amiga songs, you can hear that actually there are two channels to the right channel and two channels in the left channel, which makes four channels in total. So two to the left and two to the right. But at least you could have four sounds at the same time, which was great at the time. And in the early 90s, it was really cool that you could do music like this on your own in your home. And I actually had a great fortune to get my hands on an Amiga 600 already in 1992, where I could start making my first music. And uh, that Amiga 600 is actually still around, but it is unfortunately right now broken. I will try to fix that at some point in my life, I think. But for now, I will have to use a software clone instead on my PC. So when I was young, I mainly used MED and OctaMED on the Amiga. But now I found a clone of ProTracker 2, which works pretty good. So I found this on 16bit.org. Uh, I have a link in the description. However, I do not guarantee this software in any way. I downloaded it and installed it and it worked fine, but I have not reviewed the code or ensured this software in any way. So if you download it, it's on your own risk. But as I said, for me it worked fine. But now let's look a bit into the Pro Tracker software and see how it works and see if we can create some cool mod trackers of our own that remind me of an old Amiga demo. So this is basically the mod tracker. So what you can do here is that you can load samples. So you can have a quite a large number of samples here and you load basically WAV files from your computer. And then you can use this simple sequencer here to basically map these samples how they should be played. It's pretty straightforward. And then you can create a number of patterns. So I can create a new pattern here, number one. And then I have this uh, song editor here. So I can just create a song basically using the different patterns I have created. Uh, I can also add some commands here directly if I want to control like the, the amplitude or the decay or any control parameters of the sample. That is basically it. Then you just program your tune here and uh, create your song. And now let's just listen to a little example that I created myself here and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go!
So that was it for this time. I hope you enjoyed this episode on Amiga demos and uh, on Amiga mod trackers. And as usual, remember to subscribe, like, comment, it's always appreciated. And I will be back in no time with some more 80s, 90s EDM related content that might or might not include Korg Volkas. Until next time, ta-da! Thank you.